Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, it's an AMA podcast. You sent us questions about anything and everything. And we've selected some of our faves, that's F-A-V-S, yeah. short for favorites. For those of you who are uh, uh, don't know that, which there is one person out there, just so you know. There's always one person who- And you know what, you cleared it up for him. Yeah, right. Oh, it's, it's a guy. definitely a guy. <laughs> you cleared it up it's for him. It's definitely a guy. Um, the first question, because we're gonna get right into this, comes from me. Because right before we started recording, my question was, my statement to the people who are in the room as I scan the room, not including you, was you guys, you're too young oh, to on. see. You're gonna go there again? Yeah, I I, thought, I thought you just did that, but that was a pre-podcast thing, and now you're gonna bring it up here. Okay, whatever. I think it's worth bringing it up because I just I, no one. I need some camaraderie here because you didn't back me up. I'm not a communist. I have hit. It, there was a time in my life where I had a television that, in order to make it work, you had to hit the side of it, and it worked because we were trying to get this headphone thing working, and I told Maggie just to hit it or blow in it like a cartridge. And that does, it does work, and it do, is working now. It is working now, she did not hit it like a television. But there may come a time during this podcast in which it doesn't work, and at that point, I'm going naked. That's shorthand for saying I'm taking my headphones off only. And uh, I feel like I could do the whole I'm podcast without I'm so glad without, that that's without, all that meant. Without them. I feel like it's a crutch. You know? <laughs> I feel like the headphones are a crutch for a bad hair day. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it explains why the, the backside of your hair do it's so flattened. Yeah. Second question is from Kendall Saunders, or Sanders. Uh, if I recall correctly, Kendall had lots of good questions. I think we've narrowed it down to this one. If we were to switch bodies, a la Freaky Friday, <laughs> what is a quirk you think you may need to tell me about your body that I should be aware of? Mm. And I, she wrote it as if I was asking you. So this is me asking you. if. If I switched to your body, what would you need to tell me about it and vice versa? And then she goes on, for example, some of mine would be my knees always crack. It's nothing to be concerned about. I have a small cow lick in the right side of my head you'll never tame. If your ankles start to hurt, just pop the toes and you'll instantly feel better. That's if you go into Kendall's body, I love this become question. Kendall. I love this question because. Pops her, pops her toes and her ankles feel better. Yeah, only Kendall knows that. And it's could you weird. imagine if you switched with Kendall and you had crazy ankles for three weeks but you didn't know you just had to pop the toes? And you couldn't talk to Kendall because that would be you. Yeah, so um, first of all, before Great we switch question. bodies, before you switch bodies with me, we would need like a week long class. <laughs> I, I mean, I am a very unusual. Well, give me the truncated version here because what if it happens as a result of something we discuss or if we hit the invisible trigger? I don't know, I didn't watch Freaky Friday. Yeah, I missed that one. Um, well, first of all, just being a large person, you know, someone who's six foot seven, who's about an inch shorter than your typical door frame. Oh. Uh, with hair, grazing the door frame. There's a whole like door frame conversation, which is just when in doubt, duck, which is you're always in doubt, so you should always duck a little bit while indoors. So just walk around hunched. Always be hunched. In high school, you, you did have a you did have a little bit of a hunch. Yeah, it was for the door frames. <laughs> I have since corrected my posture for the most part, mostly due to like yoga and Pilates, et cetera. Um, but there's there's the the body size thing, but there's also like uh, if you if you're trying to bike up a hill, your right knee is going to start hurting. If you're trying to uh, just walk down a hill, your right knee is going to start hurting. Um, and you and you really, I th I, <laughs> I wasn't tracking with what you were saying for a second. <laughs> I didn't know you had moved on to other things. I thought you were still talking no, about your on. height going through a door frame. So I thought you were presenting an analogy. Yeah. It's, you know, if you if you uh, bike up a hill, your right knee's yeah. going to stop hurting. In the same, it start hurting. Nope. In the same way, this you have to duck new, going through this a door is new frame. Stuff. You've moved on. Okay, so I'm, I, I should listen if yeah. I'm gonna if I'm going to become you. Uh, I can your get, right knee. Yeah, I can get little fellers out with my tongue. I knew that. Um, that that's a good reason to become you, because a I don't have tonsils anymore to have the tonsil stones in them, and it's so annoying being on the receiving end of 
Like you're making that face and I can tell you're digging your tongue into I don't the back even, of your throat I don't to even, pull out a pustule. I don't even get them anymore. When was the last time you saw me make that face? It's been years. That's true. The reason is because I got so adept at just getting stuff out the moment it, that it's in the tonsils that it's it's almost just like a knee, it's a, it's a completely, it's, I don't, it's, it's subconscious at this it's, point. It's part of your eating regimen? You just, you just, Lick, eat, lick your I, tonsils. And then I clean my tonsils. You out lick your teeth. tonsils. Yeah, I, I, I don't even think about it. Anymore. That is see, and you know, you, your biscuitier, are feeling the same way I feel, which is this is gross. Why are you talking about this? Well, it's important information if you're going to take over my body. But I do. I I am curious when I do become you and I experience it from the inside out. If I will get it, if be like, oh, I understand why. No matter how much I tell him, and it annoys me. Mm-hmm or how gross it is to anyone, including everybody listening, that it's now worth it. I know that it's worth it. Yeah. Is that what you're telling me? Well, I'm just also saying when you turn your uh, head to the left, you're gonna and do that, you're gonna feel four pops, completely normal, happens every time. Uh, you're gonna have a recurring pain in the upper back, a recurring pain in the middle back, and a recurring pain in the lower back. But if you get up and do a series of stretches, which I can give you diagrams every single morning, preferably with your dog on your face the whole time, um, <laughs> you will ha- you will gain mastery over these things. Uh, also, every once in a while, just while breathing, you're going to feel a sharp pain right in the middle of the chest. You're going to think that you're having a heart attack. It is not a heart attack. It is it is also not a pinched lung, as Link would call it. Yeah, a pinched lung. It's because being pinched. the lungs don't have nerves. It's just a spasm of sorts in your rather impressive pectoral muscles, I will say that. Um, let's see, what else? Can you follow him on Instagram? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's probably, that's just day one. I could go on, I won't because this is an unlikely scenario, but I'm just saying I, I got a lot. I got a lot I can tell you. What about you? Uh, when you enter my body and become me, that's, that's kind of a weird way to put it. Um, I would say just enjoy it, man. <laughs> it's pretty, the, the water's fine. You don't have any like precautions, like don't touch sharp objects. I mean, like no, I would at least say that. Just live with and sleep with reckless abandon. You know, it's the world is your oyster, man. Just crack it, crack it, drop some Tabasco on it, and slurp it down. Just enjoy it because it it won't last forever, but it will change you forever. I yeah, believe you'll, it. You'll be you. Well, That's you'll a pretty ch- big change. when you change back to you you will still have lasting effects of swimming in the ocean of Link. Oh gosh, uh, let's move on to the next question. You, I could go on. Please don't. We'll both write manuals. <laughs> Mine will be an yours existential is not a, yours is, guided not tour. Yours is not helpful. <laughs> uh, Tafe Andrews asks, do you have a paramedic on set? Oh, that's a good question. So as we're filming Good Mythical Morning, do we have a paramedic action? Yes. Um, and That is a recent addition. Yeah, it is. And on any given day, I mean, it, we have a rotation of paramedics. It's not the same one every day. I don't think they can they can handle the suspense but this of is, me almost chopping your f- fingers off. But this is a slow build. I, I will say blowing that. Blowing your face off is something by accident. If you go back uh, to basics, if you go back to the first few years of GMM, there was nothing. If if we if we had a I was had your an, paramedic an accident. You were my paramedic. Someone was going to die, and yeah. um, and then that turned into sometime like eighteen months ago. Well, there was a middle point where we would, if we like one of the first person we people we hired, we were looking for an editor, and so we were looking for an editor slash CPR registered babysitter. I think it's we didn't say that, but that's kind of what I don't we recall were, that when we were looking at resumes. It's like we we knew we needed a lot. But I do seriously remember about eighteen months ago, uh, Stevie was like, "Well, several people on the crew are now CPR certified." It's like good that's idea. A good idea. <laughs> uh, and then in November, we'll uh, give them something to practice on. When GMM became a YouTube original. Um, and we were able to get some more resources. One of the resources that we got was a budget that allowed us to have a full-time paramedic. And the funny thing is, is regardless of who it is, it's um, I look over there and I see her face from she's time like to time. A, she's it's, like a hawk. It's it's never 
a relaxed face. Yeah. It, it's always like, this. it can hit the fan real quick here. I just, I, you know what, maybe I'll own some of this. I, I don't get the impression from the paramedics that I put them at ease. No, you don't. Yeah. I just get that vague impression. That, <laughs> hey, they're looking at me a lot. They are looking at you most of the time. This is true. I mean, there was a recent, there was a recent thing that we filmed that I'm not gonna describe because it's it's not out yet. It's like a special thing. It may never come out, by the way, depending on how the thing before it goes when it comes out. Oh, that thing. So because we filmed your thing, then we filmed my thing right afterward, even though we wanted to introduce space in between them um, for you to have some time to digest one before the next. And when I was, I, I I thought it was a near death experience. Like the point was I wasn't supposed to say anything. There was like a conceit to this video. I'm sorry I can't give you details, but I thought you were acting. I was not acting. But I was staying in character. Huh. You did a Think good job. Think about that. No, I, I wanted to stay within the rule the the rules of the of the piece, but I I was very afraid. I think we I should dying. just release it no matter what the reaction to my thing is. Okay, especially now that I've talked about it without talking about it. <laughs> but I look at, when I was done, I look I, I walked out and I was okay by that point. I was still in pain, but I was okay. And um I knew I wasn't going to die. And I I went by um I can't remember which paramedic it was. Kind of all blurs together. Anyway, she she was she was I was like, "What would you have done?" And she was like, "Well, I was thinking about that, but I, I, I didn't reach any conclusion." So she, she was there. And she was thinking it through, like, "Oh, I'm the one, but I don't know how to deal with this specific thing." But I mean, we can't really keep talking about it unless you want to say what it was, because well, it, there's certain things that you're choking on that there's nothing you can do. Yeah, Heimlich doesn't work for huh, certain things yeah. that you're choking on. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we will get back to these questions in one second, but we will stop very briefly to let you know that you know what you can get? I actually wore it Tell me. on the podcast recently. Yes, Cotton Candy Randy t-shirts, yeah, guys. It says, hi daddies, which is Cotton Candy Randy's favorite thing to say. And when you put the shirt on, it, it whispers disturbing secrets in your ear. Uh, Cotton Candy Randy is, is my favorite person. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> A lot of people think that it's just a character played by Jordan, uh, one of our writers, but actually it, he's it's real. It's just a real, uh, I don't wanna say superhero, but fictional. Person. A real fictional He's a character. Person. He is a fake person played by Jordan. Is that what you were saying? Uh, no, he's like the Easter Bunny. He's a real fictional person. Right. He's not just one of our writers he's playing a, a He's a cultural phenomenon. And a lot of people uh, really, now first of all, Cotton Candy Randy is polarizing, and polarizing things are my favorite things. That polarizing things are great on t-shirts. Yeah, and so if you hate Cotton Candy Randy, that's why I love Cotton Candy Randy. And if, because if, if, that's if, why if somebody when, doesn't when you hate buy it, it's not worth loving. If somebody doesn't hate it, it's not worth loving. That's how I feel about it, because if everybody's just like. You're looking at me like I'm uh, supposed to vouch for that? Nah, it's, it's pretty good, then it's not, it's not great. Somebody's gotta hate it. Some people hate Cotton Candy Randy. I will That's what say makes so great. the haters should go to mythical dot store and buy the Cotton Candy Randy T-shirt because then you can you, burn it. You're buying the right to deface it. Yeah, you can do whatever. It's not like and, money here. You can buy our merch and destroy it. Right, just as long as you buy it. Because if you destroy it, you might want to get it again. Support entertainment. Rep your teams. You can get that at both mythical. Uh, dot store, but you can also get it at amazon.com slash mythical, our Amazon store. Check out both of those stores because they have different stuff, yeah. except for that, which has both of them. Yeah. At, it's your turn to ask a question. Well, then let me ask it. This one's from Catherine Zybarth. Yes. I've always wanted to know what your wives think about your jobs. There was an exclamation point, I didn't anticipate it. Especially when you dress up like women, well, that's cry weird. laugh emoji. Um, well, I uh, should I include emojis in when I ask the question? Yeah, the part about dressing up like women does not blip their radar. No, because so, we do, we do that at home most times. I'm not digging. I'm just not digging into that one because it's uh, it that's it's just a non-issue. Yeah, they they they're kids. Kids or nor wives are ever 
surprised by what we may wear, uh, come home smelling like, it's just all a big blur at this point. Now, um, you know, Christy nor my kids watch every episode of Good Mythical Morning, they, you know, I come home and and it's like they live with That's me. That's the show right Why, there. <laughs> that is the show. No, it's like, I don't know. I don't think I'd wanna watch somebody that I lived with, watch their show uh, every single day. But then they do like it and they do like to catch up uh, on parts of it. But um, so C- Christy doesn't watch that much or or listen to Ear Biscuits that much, but oh, today. I got a text from Christy, I'm pulling it up, just a few hours ago. She texted me, you don't believe in a soulmate? (laughs) Which was our last Uh, Ear Biscuit conversation. Did I say? You know what happened. Somebody out she wasn't, there. She never they listens don't to, listen to our biscuits. podcast. What happened There's is somebody rat. who knows them listened to our podcast and then and, and was like, knows our wives. And then. You, you think so, Jesse so might have gotten a. I bet you when I get home tonight, I'm gonna get it. She, <laughs> she ain't gonna text me. I don't know. Did she's you just say gonna something? She's wait till I get home. Did you, she's gonna ambush you. I said the same thing, but she knows this yeah. is how I feel already. She knows that. It, in fact, I think the fact that she knows. That that's how I feel makes our love even more special, right, honey? Well, let's pause on that for a second. This is what okay. I responded to Christy. Ha ha. Oh. I was telling you about this. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, that, oh really? That's your response? I think I was. Ha ha. I think I did. I'm pretty sure that I had mentioned to her that this had come up uh, on an ear biscuit. Oh, but it hasn't come up in a personal conversation before you before? Um, not in in recent years. No, it's not just it's not like dinner talk for us. Hey, let's bring up that are we soulmates conversation again? But I it's I it's not honestly, are you soulmates? Is is there such a I, thing I, as soulmates? I know so it's, and, and then she responded, I don't remember. And of course, I can't tell if there's sarcasm in that. I don't know. I haven't talked to her. And I was like, yeah, and. I love you and I actually do think you are my soulmate. Smiley face. It's our special secret. Oh gosh. What? You, you know, what? And you left it at that? And then she says, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that secret needs to be made public. Oh, well, it has been now. And I responded, Winky face emoji? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. It's almost like you're in a different conversation. It is right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, that's not a winky face emoji. That's a semicolon and a parentheses. Do you not Old understand school, man. how it's done? Old school. There's a whole keyboard for it. I also hit televisions to get them to function. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Winky, I, you think I the winky? I actually think that it will automatically translate into an emoji if you do it right. I didn't. But d- maybe, maybe that is a successful distraction technique. The biggest revelation in this whole exchange is that you're still doing in the semicolon and the parentheses, <laughs> honestly. On uh, a phone, in an email it's one thing. I'm certain I've on talked to her about it, but she does not listen to this podcast and we have a rat. Who is the rat? It could be my sister-in-law, it could be your brother-in-law. Yep. There's a number of people. Well, that's the only two I can think of. Your sister-in-law listens to this? Yeah, I recently found out. My brother's wife. Oh, yes. She, she she likes to listen to it while she does things. Oh gosh, she's listening right now. We're making it worse. You know what? You've done a, you've done a plenty, as we would say. <laughs> you've done a plenty. Uh, you who know who you are. I like rats. But Many in, people have rats. But in pets. general, our wives really love our gosh. show, except when we say things like there are no such thing as soulmates. I'm certain that I've talked to Christy about her not being my soulmate any more than. Any, I almost texted back. I was like, "Yeah." Well, hold on, but you're put. You're still putting it wrong. You don't say you're not my soulmate. You be like, "I don't believe in the concept." No of one has soulmates. a soul. Yeah, and you know you what? Can I could be wrong. You, you can know become I've a soulmate. My mind. You can become a soulmate. This is much easier this way. I was wrong. I am really sorry. Christy is my soulmate. I'm her soulmate. I don't know about anybody else. Yep, and Jesse's my soulmate too. Right. Solved. Katie Ann. 
Lingvarsky. Yes. How do your kids handle you guys being famous? I'm not sure if you'd like to, that to be the word I use, but you understand that. Oh no, you can say it. <laughs> <laughs> Since they go to school and everyone is on the internet, do they love it, hate it? Do all their friends watch you guys? This is a great question, Katie Ann. Because I think that our kids do have opinions about this. Yeah, they do. I mean, Lily's 14, Locke is 13, Lincoln is 12, Shep, how old is Shepard? Nine. Nine, and then Lando is seven. And they're all about to increment up a year. Uh, many of them, uh, Everyone except Shep will turn a new year in the next 12, in the next uh, four, 20, 30 days. <laughs> How many numbers can you say wrong? I don't know. I'm 12, just, 4, 20, right? Uh, none of those were prime numbers though. That's, I'm proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. Um, well, I know, I know your, your, your eldest, Locke has been more concerned about it than Lily, which, which surprised me a little bit. Lily going to a new school and all. Uh, I mean, I, my interpretation is that Locke um, wants to be his own person, wants to establish his own deal, um, doesn't want to be first and foremost known as my son. And um, you never get a first chance to make a second impression. Yep. And um, there are there are situations like there have been some things like there was an event at his school that was like some sort of like pancake breakfast or something. Uh, and this is like well, he had been going to school for like a week or two. And uh, you know he was new to school because they've been homeschooled. And he was like, ah, "Dad, I, I don't want you to come to that because if I go to something uh, that with kids in that age group, it can you know it, it's the pictures start and and it just becomes about me being there. And yeah. so, um, so you immediately I, knew why. And I, yeah, and I'm like, cool. I don't want to go anyway. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but uh, so I get out a lot of things because no, but I, I totally get it. And and then we had like there was like an event. Uh, like an Oktoberfest event that his, some of his friends were going to, but we were also going to go to it. And he was like, "I don't want to walk around with you," you know. And I mm -hmm. and I get it. I totally get it. And I, I and I actually went to that thing or something very similar to it with Lincoln. Uh, he's a grade lower at the same school, and yeah, there was those moments. There was like some picture opportunity moments, and there was just a risk there of like, is it was this, you know, how's that gonna Lincoln wasn't too phased by it, but um, yeah, I don't like it when it happens at one of his things. Yeah, you know, yeah. like a sporting event or something like that. Right, like the team that you just played wants to you know, if kids from that team want to come get a picture of me. I'm just like, ah, I yeah, I, but I don't want to be a jerk to those kids and be like, no. Yeah, that's happened to me too. But so I, Lincoln's opponents are taking pictures with me. It's like that's <laughs> there's a loyalty thing happening here. Right. Yeah. I don't um, take. T I don't. I don't take pictures with the the enemy. But I mean, I went to Lando's uh, grade school for some event and he was like so excited to have me there. And then there were a few like, with those younger kids, even a few picture moments happening and like he just went away. He went somewhere else. He did not wanna yeah. stay right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, Lando's uh, pretty shy, you know, so it, it, he definitely would never see that as an opportunity. Hey, 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 you know, like I probably would have when well, I was his age. And Shepard does. Oh, and Shepard does. Because when we were talking about this, right when they were starting school, uh, I figured that the word would get around. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were just talking about, did like, have, the, have kids come up and like asked you, is your dad on the internet or whatever? And Lot was like, yeah, and I kinda, and he, he, he kinda took the approach, he was like, sometimes I just say no. Or like I don't know what you're talking about, like because mm. I don't want to have a conversation about it. But Shepard, but Shepard was like, I told my class on day one. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's on YouTube. <laughs> you know, like, he's I in third grade though, standing up and just telling everybody in class. Now, I mean, when we were first talking about that with Lincoln, I was like, Lincoln, does this con does this concern you? And he was like, Yeah, I don't, you know, we both have have discussed being a you know helping our kids be a good judge of character that their friends want to be their their friends and not just yeah. Fr proxy our friends through our kids or you know just think it's cool to be associated. You want them to be friends because of them. And then Lincoln comes home a few, day few days later and he's like, I need, can I get your autograph? I wanna give it to a friend of mine. <laughs> I'm like, weren't you listening First son? of all, it's 2018. Uh, autographs are not a thing. 
signature? Is that what we call them now? They well, don't have it. No, no I'm, yeah, I'm saying But one. it gets difficult because there's a fundraiser at Lando School, he loves his school, and then a teacher asked me if I would show up to be one of the prizes for the kids that raise the most money. Well, how, and what, like you're just gonna to, come out of a, a cake? Meet, what are you talking about? A meet and greet situation. <laughs> okay. And potentially both of us, but you know, I knew I knew how sensitive Lando was, and it's a hard thing to say no to when it's like it, you just feel like they're not going to understand why you're saying no. But this would really impact how the school viewed Lando potentially, and you know, it, there's a, there's enough things that he's trying to figure out how the other kids. As, how the other kids, yeah. what did I say? The school, I mean. I, it, All the kids in the school, yeah. Would start to see him and it's like, you don't wanna be defined by somebody else. Yeah. Or something else that's not you. In general, I don't think. It, it's, but it was a hard thing to say no to. It was It was easy that that was the right choice for us, but it was, you just, I mean, it's, yeah, it's tough saying no when you, you feel like you can't, it. you try to explain why, but it's, you know, it's frustrating for the person planning because they had a good idea in their mind, and then you're like, well, now you practically now you got to start over, right? And, yeah, and, and I might be a jerk. I don't know. Give me another question. Uh, actually, Is it I my think turn. You, I got a page. You've got some questions now. Mer Minerva LGP asks, "Do you play any bets between the two of you? It looks like you are very much into games and competition on GMM. Does that happen often? IRL. That's Good Mythical Morning versus." in real life. Hmm. Both acronyms. Uh, yeah, this is actually something that we've done for a long time. Um, going back to when we were kids, yeah. most, most of the time it, it's like, if I can hit that rock, if I can hit that pole with this rock, you gotta give me $5. That was the beauty of childhood. The way that we worked, man, we were just like, just like coyotes on the prowl around Bowie's Creek. Just had all the time in the world to do whatever we wanted. And you just mosey. Sometimes you would just mosey and like down the street, pushing your bike or whatever. And or riding the bike. many, many, many times, I would say 98, 95% of the time, you and you would instigate some sort of pseudo athletic prowess bet. That's what life's all about. You know, it's like throwing this, you know, this, this was pre dude perfect. We were still hitting televisions to make them work. Yep. But it was, you know, can you throw this rock over the power line, but then get it through the hoop in my basketball goal as I'm entering the door to get a Kit Kat from the well, cabinet? It doesn't have to be that intricate, but but it, then we would sit there. We had we had time well, to mosey. We would sit there for twenty minutes trying here's to do it. The beautiful thing about this is that you can take what. Otherwise, it's just a completely boring moment in life. And yeah. if you have an object in an environment, you can create a challenge that can get a group of people so fired up. Like, and I absolutely love to do this. Yeah. So, if it's if it's comedically frivolous enough, then I'll also get involved. But the competition aspect of it doesn't resonate with me. But the the sheer nuts factor is what I but, love. Because because here's what here's the beautiful thing. So like, uh, so it's not about winning money. Not too long ago. There's never really any. I mean, money we always involved. say that there's no, nobody ever gets paid. But um, I, uh, our friend Mike, uh, Mike was featured in the uh, quest for the the perfect taco on our Instagram story. Uh, yeah, from oh oh yeah. So Mike was out here, and we were at my basketball goal at my house, and uh, we were some. I like that was like all right. I'm gonna see if I can throw it up on top of the house, two story house have it bounce off of the Spanish tile roof, so it, which is not a predictable bounce. No, it's not at all. Come back down and go into the, the hoop. And uh, We're talking about horse here? This wasn't even a horse, because no one can actually, we, we played a game of horse, but then we just started trying this shot. Okay. And, uh, and then it, we quickly learned that the chances of this going in are so slim that if it does go in, we're gonna go nuts. And so just one after another, the three of us just like rotating, kept doing it. And, and, and never once did you think we should film this and no send it to Texas. Uh, but when it happened. It did happen? It did, I hit it, I made it. You did? Uh, How long did it take? Uh, 12 minutes. 
you know, I mean, we're shooting a lot. So it felt more impossible than it was. Yeah, but when it happened, the celebration, the, the embraces, the jumping in the air, yeah. the, the yelling. Yeah. You would think that someone had won something significant, but no, we just created a little challenge. Or had like a, a child. Just the other day when we were, uh, we were shooting the Dude Perfect uh, parody thing. The field the, goals. The field goals. Kicks. Um, we got yeah, to, down to the we end. We got done. And I was like, I'm gonna throw this football into that trash can. Yeah, from a, from a distance that any middle it, school it quarterback. Wasn't, it was like 20 yards. <laughs> and I threw it like 20 times and eventually. No, was, no, hold, what? You threw once, then I threw it. And yeah. when I threw it, I almost hit it yeah, right but, off the bat. Yeah, but neither of us made it. It never. Well, my it, shoulder got hurt, and well, then the well, paramedic had to come over yeah, exactly, and help me. With it. Like, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like two throws in, Link's sitting down getting massages from the paramedic. <laughs> the only, the only useful thing the paramedic has done the whole time that we've been well, employed. No, she's given us a sense, a veneer of safety. Well, she. It's very useful that she's there. I'm she's just saying. She's kept our insurance policy legit. Yeah, yeah. Those are two big things, and then the third thing. The is, most work. When my shoulder got tweaked in the quarterback zone. Quarterback zone. She she lent a hand. It wasn't, when the, you say the, getting the a massage from no, the. No. The massage lasted 20 minutes. I was like, when is Link gonna get back into this? Well. I lost heart, man. I didn't even I didn't even get, get it in there because I lost heart because you just got a massage. In but the Andrew, the cameraman started tossing it. Yeah, but nobody did it. Not the same as me, huh? <laughs> no. You can say it. It wasn't the same. That's it. Anyway. Shoulder's still hurt. I think it's a great asking. way to inject some stakes I think into I your life. I think I have a hereditary shoulder issue. I went to therapy a few years back. That's what got me back into the gym to maintain the ground I regained from physical therapy in this uh, joint in my shoulder. Um, but my dad, he came, he picked me up from college one day and he took me on Christmas shopping to buy my gifts because that's what, that was our tradition, and we were having a good old time in the in the um, Crabtree Valley Mall, and I just I just leaned over and I just I just punched him on the shoulder, just like a lo we call what we call a love lick. My granddad would always pinch me or like give you a, yeah. a twister in the T region, mm -hmm. or like just a good wallop on the arm. Or a frog on the leg, that's a love lick. So I gave my dad one of those. That's just a way to non-verbally say, I love you and I'm powerful. <laughs> and my dad didn't tell me for like six months, but I severely damaged his <laughs> shoulder. Oh, like he said he, it started hurting, so he, he had to go to the doctor oh, and it and like the oh, ligament God. had separated. Oh gosh, you're such a jerk, man. I'm such a jerk. Bad? I felt horrible. And he didn't tell me for six months, and now I think I'm getting it. So I'm literally telling my kids, like, don't, no love licks in the shoulders. You know, there's, you know how, you know how broad they are. <laughs> <laughs> so they're so usually that means they're not susceptible as susceptible to. Things. I mean, they're really far apart, and not in a good way. In like a, in like a disproportionate robot. Yeah, it's like kind of it's a like way. side view mirrors that are just waiting to be right clipped by another car. And then the collarbones are so prominent. Yeah. There's something just anatomically is not correct about my shoulder region. You need to wear shoulder pads all the time. <laughs> like my mom in the 80s yeah. and the 90s. You could bring them back. You could bring, the early 2000s. You could bring those back, man. I could wear, I could just go raid her closet for all of her trench coats. I'd be like Kevin Smith, but with more shoulder pads. Let's uh, ask another question. Yeah, ask one. Laurel and Browning, as lifelong best friends, have you ever had the conversation, if I die first, I want to, dot, dot, dot. Oh, let's get into death. If I die first, I want to, dot, dot, dot. Have we had this conversation, she wants to know. Well, we did have um, the like uh, tactical, logistical conversation um, just about like, because we had to like create our like in whole insurance deal, you know, like a couple years ago when we like yeah. went through the whole process of like creating wills and insurance and and, and that kind of thing. Um, but none of that really answers the question. Well, because I mean, it turns out if you have, if you have a successful business as a duo, I mean, 
that where you're kind of the faces of this thing, it was pointed out to us, you have to, you, I mean, we had to explore all this stuff that literally included like, if one of us dies, like what happens? I mean, cause you have this catalog of videos that, you know, I mean, face it, when one of us dies, a lot of you will watch a lot of them. Even more so than are being watched now. So there's, that generates income. And so it's like, well, how do you distribute that? If I die, well, I get. I, I get all the money. No, because I got a well, family. That's what, that's what my contract says. <laughs> No, so and then it was like vice vice versa, and then it was like well, it's if like we both. Died, it's like when they say that like Taylor Swift has her legs insured, which I don't know if that's an urban legend or it's true, but basically used to be Mary Hart. They just updated the urban legend. The du the duo is insured, right? So when the duo is no longer a duo because of the untimely death of one of the duos, one part of the duo. Uh, it's really it's our a, our wives. The, the the other person's wife will be well taken care of and. There'll be, uh, there's an insurance payment which basically, the, the, so like let's say I die. Th good. You, then now you're figuring. I mean, not, no, I don't mean good. I mean if one of us is, if we're gonna say one of us, it's good that you chose yourself. Yeah. And so then you have to kind of figure out, well what are you gonna do, right? What, what, right. What's next for the linkster? Yeah, which and incidentally, that's, that's I do a much think, bigger question. I do think you should begin to refer to yourself as the linkster. At that point. Because you just, oh, right. what I found is that with the exception of Cher, you can't just have a one syllable name and just be known by that. Link. You got too, Oprah, too you short. got Madonna. You gotta go to the linkster with a, with a V. That's my first piece of advice. But also, I already knew that. You, you will get paid an insurance payment, which is the whole link transforming into the linkster transition period where you're figuring right. out what you're going to do. And what is the linkster well, going to be known for? Is he going to, are you going to learn to juggle? I suggest that as well. Mm -hmm. you, I, you can take it or leave it. All these well, ideas are great. There'll be quite a bit of floundering. And the floundering will be covered by an insurance payment. Right. And by that, I literally mean shh. Fishing for flat fish, <laughs> the linkster <laughs> who's floundering. Eyes are, right, you're, oh, it's just gonna be you're gonna do like a a, a Bill dance a sabbatical. What was yeah. his name? <laughs> Bill dance? Yeah, was that his name? I was watching Bill dance. You know, there's a there's a Reddit montage. Yes, <laughs> you saw that. I saw it a couple <laughs> weeks back. It's so good. Bill dance. Is it Bill a, dance? Is that his name? Bill dance. I feel like I'm verify that, please. Fisherman Bill dance. He, he had a fishing show, and I think he still does, and he wears a Texas hat. Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh gosh, I, you just listen, offended so many people. I know, I'm just out it's of. It's an orange tea, I'm not out a of burnt it. orange Longhorn. <laughs> it's yeah, Tennessee. We just lost Here. a lot of fans. They're gone. Now I'm just talking to you, because that's all we had. Uh, yeah, so uh, just, I mean, it's kind of Winnebago it Man-ish. Yeah. But it's Bill Dance talking to the camera while he's fishing, and then all types of stuff happens. He's the greatest. No. You're the greatest. The Winnebago man is the greatest. Oh. No. They're all they're, the greatest. They're both great. They're both great, right. I, why don't I always forget that? Um, but anyway, so that's taken care the of. the worst runner in the history of Good Mythical Morning. By <laughs> it right. always has to be reestablished and re-explained as to what it is. I saw comments but, on that. But um, it's a legitimate question. Uh, so I mean, no, we're having the conversation now. I mean, Link's gonna potentially be a fisherman. But they're saying if I die, well, I, what Laura wanted to know was what our funeral plans are, which we, you know, we we specified a lot of those in the book, so we won't go through that. Just book well, them at the and that does lead into a, the, a tandem question, which uh, Faith Shoecraft, will you be buried next to each other? <laughs> yeah. So if we die together, you know, that's simple. You know, the, we know how the money split to the to the families, um, and you don't have to worry about floundering. Right. But so, but before we answer, oh, we would be buried next to each other. So I think that um, it's not. Are you, are you going? You teasing that? It's not That's a like. Big one, huh? Yeah, yeah. I like to tease when I can. I. It's <laughs> not like. Well, w you would go back to be an engineer. Or I would go back to be an engineer just because we have. To, we would obviously continue uh, on in some sort of entertainment. Yeah. Uh, and then there's questions of like, do we need? Uh, do should we replace the person or should we just be a solo act? Like you know, I th these are these are all. Uh, legitimate questions that we would that who, answer who, right now. Who, whoever is left, no, we should. That's a cross that bridge when the person dies situation, right? And that, again, it's, there's money for floundering. Yeah, and you never know what kind of you never know what it's going to be. Is this a death you can see coming from miles away, or is this sudden? Real, real, real interesting. Not sad at all. So, we, so we're pushing that off. But if we die at the same time, will we? What will we be buried? Or, or not? Or not? Will we no. be buried? A, I'm, I'm not going to be buried. Okay, I'm gonna be cremated. B, 
Okay, is that news to you? Well, I just, once they asked it, I was like, man, that would be pretty cool. Be buried next to each well, other. Well, I guess if I get cremated, then dividing the ashes up is easy, but do you, you don't, do you have a, like a, do you have like a, a grave site that you can go to when you get cremated? Well. Or I thought you were just on, the, I, on I, a shelf somewhere. I have been thinking that I would be, I think in the book we say that we're gonna be cremated because that led to like a comedic. I've said cremated for, for quite some time now. But I really like the idea of biodegrading in a biodegradable box. It is the most environmentally responsible friendly. way. And I've already done it once. But you can't be, you can't, you can't be, you have to be, cre yeah, he was, yeah. He, <laughs> he was buried alive in a cardboard box. Uh, in in commercial uh, Kings. the pilot episode of Commercial Kings. You can watch, first of all, you can watch Co it on iTunes. Commercial Kings is available. You can watch it on iTunes or Amazon. It's a sh show we did like seven years ago the on pi IFC. Pilot episode. It's a we, good show. We went you to Asheville, North Carolina, and we um, we did a commercial for a company called Bury Me Naturally, mm -hmm. and it was a a woman who Carol 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 Motley Carol Motley. I remember everything about it. <laughs> she uh, she sold biodegradable cardboard caskets. And of course, if we were gonna make an ad for it, you had to test it out. And you Rhett had, wouldn't you fit in the freaking Rhett wouldn't fit in the freaking cardboard box. Yeah. So he buried me in it. Right. And you know what? I'd do it all over, but I would be dead. Yeah, being dead would be, you'd be less nervous. But uh, here's the thing: of you know, like a mausoleum, you've got like those drawers. If you just if you take a casket and you put it above ground, I'm calling that a, a, a one person mausoleum. If you take two of those, stack it on top of each other, I'm calling that a two person mausoleum. But you know what that looks like? A GMM desk. Then on top of that, you put a microphone, you put two Hold on, but limestone. Let's make it limestone. You'll be made out of wood and I'll be made out of limestone. But what about your wife? I'll get to that. <laughs> what about so your, what there about we are, your soulmate? Visages. visages. <laughs> <laughs> Visages, man, uh, statues. Now, Hold on, this here's is a, the answer. We're this not, is a pretty, I mean, you wanna have statues? Self-aggrandizing, self, self yeah. isn't it? Well, it wouldn't be open to the public. I wouldn't charge tickets. This is in a room somewhere? This is in a. There's somewhere in the woods. This is in a private. Reserve. Pasture. This is in the pasture maybe where we like made a, the blood oath. Maybe it's like a gorilla reserve. That'd be cool and you have to like get through the gorillas to get to the statues. But well, you know, here, it turns out gorillas are actually very peaceful. Spoiler alert. But they're very scary and intimidate most people. Gorillas are so peaceful. So the people who know the truth can just walk right up to the statues. And if you pull on the microphone, it, it there's audio of something that we said at some point. Plenty of that. We can make around. that right now. Hello, welcome to the Rhett and Link Monument. Look to your left. That's George, the gorilla. Or a relative of George because yeah. we don't know how long George is gonna be around. Just name them all George, that's a footnote. Yeah, they're all named George. He looks pretty intimidating. You n had the good sense to walk through the gorillas knowing that they are naturally vegetarian and very unlikely to eat you. They can still rip good you Good for shreds. you. Thanks for showing up. Please return your map to the visitor center. You upon can also a, down exit. You can also download the app but it's too late for that because there's no cell service or whatever they call it now in this part of the forest. <laughs> Good day. You just put your $50 in this box right here. Or any, 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 amount, any amount is accepted. Over $50. To help keep up the pristine condition of this monument. Okay, end recording. Um, side note, we're not in that. Like our bodies, our remains are not in there. Yeah, no, that's, why, that's why I use the right. term monument. Right, it's, right. Because I'm gonna be buried, buried with my next soulmate. to my wife, my soulmate. But I'm not gonna be buried. I'm gonna be, well I am. I'm gonna biodegrade. I want to be spread. I want, I want my, my ashes to be spread 50% Pacific Ocean, 50% Cape Fear River. You're being real now. I am, and my wife knows this. Uh, but if I decide to go biodegradable, she's just gonna have to cut me in half. And I don't know if it's gonna be like cut me at the waist. I think she should cut me down the middle. She does. She's not doing any of it. She's instructing people to do this. Cut me down the middle because because if you, the top half seems more important. Well, the bottom half is pretty important. Um, if you cut me <laughs> mostly, man, but horse where it counts. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you cut me down the middle, so it's one laterally one half of my body. That part is. Can you? You can't just throw a dead body into the ocean or the river, though. No. Okay. If you got to burn part of me. 
cut my hands off, burn those, bury, bury the body next to my wife, put one ma- charred hand in the Pacific Ocean. You one, think this is, one you charred think this hand is funny in the games, I just, well, nothing fun about it, man. I'm just trying to cover my bases. Facetious peasant, uh, sorry, facetious pheasant, uh, very of active course. member of the uh, the mythical community, uh, asks a lot of questions. Link, will you ever return to Instagram mm. or at least post one last picture? Is that it? Um, That's it. Man. Well, there's a hashtag ear biscuits, but I thought that was unnecessary. Uh, last year, I was like, you know what? I'm really feeling that I should be on Instagram again, but I, I just need some incentive to come back. And so I was like, what if we did something on the show and that that would get me back on Instagram? And then we were like, yeah, we're, we can, people will enjoy that. And then come the top of the year, we, we started we started filming these segments no, I'm wrong. It was earlier than that because it was at the launch of of, of the expanded GMM. It was, last it was one of the year, first yeah. weeks, so that was that was in November, October. So the idea was in Octoberish. October. Anyways, it was at that the, like the transitional point in the. It, it, long story short, I just wasn't. I wasn't happy with with the segment. Well, you weren't the only one. And then <laughs> right, and it's like it just did not, nothing was nothing was how. We wouldn't do it like that now. And then, of course, we did it again because it was like, well, maybe we just need to, you know, we can keep, maybe I, we just I think, need to do it better. I think I think enough Mythical Beasts care about me returning to Instagram that maybe, maybe, maybe we can just do it again. Didn't change enough and still weren't happy with it. Again, not something we would do now in terms of like the approach and the tone and the, 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 well, can we talk about that for just a second before oh, sure. you talk about your well, sure. your Instagram? Because I know you want to talk about specifically what you're playing. Well, I'm just saying that. I was disappointed because I actually thought that that would lead to me um, getting back on Instagram. But we're not we're not doing that segment anymore because I didn't I didn't like it. Well, and, and I think talk about it as much as you and want. And I think it's bigger than that too because I mean I didn't like it as well. But yeah, it seems like the mythical beast didn't like it. Um, because it's interesting, you know. I think that we're uh, we said this so, uh, when we did our whole podcast where we um, defended ourselves against the decision to change the format of Good Mythical Morning. And I, you know, I got a little. Yeah, I, I was I was offended, as you could tell by the way that I handled myself in that podcast. And probably you were offended by yourself. I was offended by myself. <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying that, like, I was I was struggling with the fact that so many people were responding the way they were responding, responding and making accusations that they were making about what we were do, why we were doing it and stuff. And mm-hmm. you know, and then we had that raw, just this is what we're thinking right now without talking about it ahead of time podcast, which. Based on some of the response to that podcast, I was kind of like, you know what? I've kind of lost my appetite for defending myself about creative decisions, at least for a while. Um, so this isn't. Uh, so in terms of the process of like how we come, why, why you are you prepared to say why that is? I think that I, I think in general, I think it can be helpful to explain yourself or why you why you're doing things. But <clears throat> it seems to me that the people who would be affected by your defense um, don't really care for it and the people who would be affected by your defense don't need it, with rare exception. So, you know, if I, cause you know, we said multiple. So you, but you don't think that, I mean, the vast majority of responses weren't positive? No, no, I mean, and like we said before. And then it, the, so the, it was kinda helpful to, you know, to give window into, what how we were assessing or or how passionately we felt about things i mean there's a th- i could have focused more on the positive things that people were saying and less on trying to defend myself against what i thought were unfair accusations about the reasons why we were doing what we mm-hmm. were doing um but it's a, it's just a natural human response to when you're accused of something to want to give your perspective but there i mean i so i think I think we can put in one pile, defending yourself against accusers is something that you've decided not to do. Now, but a lot of that podcast, for both of us I think was, or both of those conversations was not coming from a defensive place but coming from an explanatory place which is a little bit different. It's like, 
maybe we had mythical beasts whose heads who were scratching their heads, but they believe they gave us the benefit of the doubt, but there was still doubt or or just gaps. So I think it's a different thing to explaining yourself and defending yourself, right? But explaining yourself can all often seem like defending yourself and I think that sometimes they are the same thing. Yeah. But all that to say that, you know, we tried a lot of things uh, early on, that segment being one of them and a few other things like that and the way I would describe that segment was a scripted segment that took place at the desk and what we learned very quickly is that it isn't that people don't want us to do scripted content. Right. It's that they don't want scripted content to invade the the non-scripted space, which I ca- call that the desk. You know what I'm saying? So it's like doing something yeah. that is obviously written ahead of time at the desk, people don't have an appetite for that and I totally get that. But yeah, yeah if we do a sketch or we do something where we're playing characters or if we do something where we're, we actually have a couple of things coming out very soon that it, it's, it's, you know, it's more along the lines of a traditional, it's not really a sketch, but you know, it's just written jokes, but it's uh, the environment that we're doing it in is more like a. It's not the desk. Yeah, and it's a shorter video and it's a more like traditional retin link, you know, before GMM sort of internet video. And once we kind of, we started to understand that like, oh, it isn't that people don't want us to try to be funny in different ways, it's that they're not comfortable with us trying this in this environment. And well, I think that segment was it, one of those things. Scripting things at the desk just ripped the heart out of what we built at the desk. And I think it was very, it was very good to be reminded of that. As a side note, I, you know, Red just kind of gave window into just kind of the, the way that we're thinking about the three videos the yellow border video, the middle one, in being, as he just said, more of a, if we remove the constr- c- creative constraints of our show, and so now we can open up to any idea we want that we wanna ta- ta- <coughs> excuse me, tackle comedically, we can do it in any way for the internet, you know, and not be, not have to, uh, I was gonna say Velcro it in, but, Wedge it in. Or you can Velcro it in. <laughs> I don't know. It's it very was. rough. <laughs> Wedge it into um, where we do our show. But it, you know, back to the Instagram thing. I think it it particularly um, pinched a nerve or pinched a nerve because for for those of you who want me back on Instagram, you legitimately want me back on Instagram. So if we're gonna explore that on the show, I mean you don't wanna toy with it so much that it seems disingenuous. And so I think, I think that, was, that, was an, that was a second strike against that thing, was that we made it into a, a comedy bit that yes was scripted, but was also it just, it, 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 it brought in a question whether I was actually gonna come back to Instagram at all. <laughs> and the plan was to come back. Is the plan still to come back? Well, it's not gonna be that way. And so now it's like, and I do think I, it's a, I saw a while back that like there was a there was a buzz that James Hetfield, the lead singer for Metallica, after five years or six years or whatever it was, came back to Instagram. And I don't know what his picture was. I was going to click on it, and then I I didn't want to think about it at that moment. So I literally ran away from the tweet. I put my phone down. I ran away. Now I didn't want to. Um. So now I'm back to the pressure that I that I described it, you know, as the premise well, for the whole bit, which it, is. Man, you just can't. You, can you just sneak in the back door of your, of your, of your big party, or do you come in the front door with your sequins on and say, "I've made it. Here I am." There's no. I mean, at this point, that analogy doesn't work because there is only a front door for you to return to Instagram through. Yeah, but if I'm just like, if I put like a picture of my carpet. Yeah, but everyone would see you. It's like walking into a party covered in a carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody still sees you. Well, it, I wouldn't be under the car. But I do think that it's uh, it's necessary to. James Hetfield, it was just a picture of him holding up. He was drinking coffee. What but does what that say? The, what's the coffee mug say? Have a glorious day. And then... Have a glorious day, but then when he picks it up, it's somebody flipping the bird uh, underneath yeah, the coffee the mug. middle finger. It's very metallic. Ironic in a metallic way. Very metallic. Well, but, but I think it's but important it, for you to but it was cute for people understand to understand too. too that your return to Instagram would have it would be a lot of hoopla around the first image, but then 
you'd be like me, probably worse than me. Oh gosh, worse. In terms of how often you post. I mean, I think oh, I- Oh, I thought you meant promoting myself on my podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I would be so much worse than you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, we're both, let's just face it, man. We're both really bad at social media. Like naturally, our natural disposition towards social media is just really not great. I legitimately have hit the side of a television in order to get it to work. <laughs> I'm telling you. That, that that tells you everything you need to know about why I'm not on Instagram. Let's, um, but, but I, I, I wanna want come you, back I want you to and come I'm back. paralyzed. I want you to come back I'm but paralyzed. Don't, don't, don't put so much pressure on yourself because you know that when you come back there's still gonna be like a month between pictures and that's okay. I think I should and just. And the first one should be you covered but in But I have a world of pictures from the past. Can I just like no, act no, no. like it's my Instagram from a year ago and just like every think, day I'm posting think, a picture? I don't think that's how it works. Of, of all the pictures I've been no. taking privately. No. Uh, let's pick the best question of the remaining questions. Oh goodness. Uh, I think you probably have a better one than I have here. Nothing against this particular question, but. I'll read them all out loud, then the ones we don't answer, people can conjecture about on using hashtag ear biscuits and see if they can be answered without us. Do you wanna do that? Let's do these two. I think we can do these two because they're fun questions that can okay. be moved through very quickly. So we're skipping. Ryan Ordonez, if you were on Amazing Race, would you take the lead? Why are you gonna read a question? I, I just told you that's what I was gonna do. And I asked you, should I do that? Well, of course you should You didn't do that. say anything. That's a great question. Yeah, I'd, I'd win. Okay, uh, go to the next question. It wasn't who would win, it was who, was, who would take the lead. I would drive. <laughs> you I would get, drive? I get car sick. Yeah, and we would wreck. Um, in a, even in a cab, I would drive. Look at us answering it. Hannah asks, well, or should I, this isn't just Hannah, this is half moon emoji, Hannah, full sun oh, symbol. That's a full spectrum there. What's your favorite texture? I love this question. Do you? What's Aren't, your favorite texture? Is gummy a texture? It may be a good texture in your mouth, but what about like no, no, in I, your hands? In my hands, everywhere. In my hands, on my body, in my mouth. Gummy things do something for me. Like a very large gummy bear, I would, I would sleep next to one of those. You know, it's not my soulmate or anything, but <laughs> I, the idea Wife of Wife on one side, blob of gummy on the other. Taking a just a g large gummy, just a hunk of gummy and just putting it on my cheek and then taking a bite out of it and then putting it back on my cheek and then rubbing it with my fingers. I but love the also, idea of all but this. But with gummy comes sticky. That is a bad texture for me. Yeah, but. Stickiness. Uh, sticky's not a texture. Sticky is a side effect of this particular thing that has the texture that I love. Sticky is and a I'm, freaking texture. And you know what? You can, get a, you can get a gummy bear that doesn't have stickiness. Sticky. Yeah, you take the sugar out of it. The gelatin doesn't have any sticky in Do it. Do not eat those. Without the sugar. It would be a horrible, it would be a horrible experience, but the texture would be great. I'd love to just have a mask that was shaped just like my mask that I could just put my face into every day. Are you talking about like hair gummy bow, mask. gummy, um, buoyancy, not buoyancy, but um, bounciness? Even a little softer. Than or are that. you talking about like that? Unwet jello. Unwet jello? Or are you talking about the fruit snacks that your mom used to buy? that were not the hardened ones, but the real Ooh, mushy ones. those, the Welches. Are they Welches? They were shaped like, like grapes. grapes. and cherries. Oh boy, if I could just have a bed made out of My that. Mouth I would water. Man. You, you'd sweat and it'd all get sticky. Yeah, I'd have somebody remake it every night. And this isn't a dream world where I have unlimited access to pe people who just generate gummy things for me. My whole house would be gummy, the furniture would be gummy. Gummy attendance? I'd have a gummy steering wheel. I'd eat it, I'd use it. This is the world I wanna live in. That's what I'm gonna do if you die. I just answered the question. I'm gonna create a gummy world that I live in. I thought my favorite texture the was- Thegummyman.com. <laughs> yeah, probably thegummyman.net because I'm sure that that's taken. Thegummyman.net. T-H-A, the gummy man. I thought my favorite texture was, the first thing I thought of was um, Jade's fur. That's sweet. But when you started talking about gummy, I realize there's a superior texture. And I can't place where I've experienced it specifically, but let me describe it to you and please help me remember where this has been experienced because uh -oh. I've been, 
it's it's like the opening scene of like the the drama where they're so in love and then they're separated by war and distance and glaciers and they're spending the whole movie trying will they reunite and 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 one of them has memory loss that you, there's a it's like a cushiony thing that ha, it's like it's got a vinyl, like a really supple vinyl over a cushion that when you push on, push in on it and then you take your hands away, it stays the same for a second and then it slowly starts to come back. Memory foam? To its original shape, like memory foam, but it's got a, it's got a plasticky film over it. Jacob's saying a wrist rest on a mouse foam? That, that's more like, gum, that's kind of No, that's gummy. more gummy. Yeah. This this is something. It's and like I love that too. I think it's a certain type of neck pillow that is cold to the touch, um, and then it's plasticky, but it's a very supple suppleness to it, and it mushes in, and then when you remove your hands, it slowly. It's the type of memory foam inside of this thing. That is not that's better than memory foam because that's my favorite texture. So you're saying that I should it's just It's almost a, like a stress ball. A memory foam bed in, Some, in all my life. I, I already sleep on it. But it's got a latex bed. covering over it. It's like a it's like a stress ball. There's a certain type of stress ball that does this, but I've experienced it in a bigger way. But for a fact, it is absolutely in a stress ball that's like got a vinyl y supple vinyl on the outside. Supple vinyl. That's Link's favorite, favorite texture. texture. Last question. Ryan Morris asks, what is the oldest object that you use on a daily basis? That's an interesting question. Oldest object. Oldest object. Every single day. Uh, there's only a few things I come in contact with every single day. I'm, I'm yeah, thinking I, this through. I, I know what it is. Well, g give me yours, because I'm, I'm at a loss. I'm kind of stepping through my day, but I, I actually have a guess of what yours might be. Okay, guess it. Your permanent retainer. I don't use it every day. What? It's permanent. It's what? stuck in your mouth forever. What do you mean you don't use it every day? I took that out, man. Oh, you did? Uh, uh, the dentist, it came loose and the dentist took it out. That's when my bottom- You didn't tell me. My bottom teeth are crooked now, see You that? didn't tell me she was gone. You see that? Yeah. I actually have a another retainer that I don't wear and that's why my bottom teeth are crooked. Well, I'm a little, I just can't believe you didn't tell me that, well, then that, that would she be, was removed. That would be the filling, uh, filling, of course. Uh, not something that's, my ring, I'm not counting that. Oh, you're not? Like an object you use that's not on your person? Because I have a couple of sealants that my <laughs> nana snuck into the dentist office over the weekend and well, put in Well, you're getting there. very, very technical. What yeah, do you mean I, I'm, get, I'm, I'm being got, honest. I've got sealants that, have, that, in fact, last time I went to the, uh, the dentist, he was like, your sealants are still intact from when you were a kid. Mine too. Yeah. My nana worked uh, for the dentist, but she was not a dentist, and then she would sneak me in on the weekend and give me things like sealants because she just, she was a dental assistant. Yeah. She did all the dentist things. She stole from the dentist. The, well, who incidentally was your father-in-law. Yep. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> she, she didn't. Stole, she stole from him. I'm you, owe, you owe me. I'm sure. Your family stole from my family. I'm sure she told him and it didn't matter. He didn't care. Now, so okay, if you, sealants or fillings, or the ring, I've been your right. glasses, I, I don't wanna. I think you're frustrated because I was right. Now no. the thing you're gonna tell me is not as old. No, 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 I'm saying an object that you come in contact with and use. Like for you it might be your glasses. Oh. Like, cause I, I feel like the ring and the glass, but things that you wear, yeah, well, technically. fine, we can go outside of the body. But I'm thinking something that I come in contact with every single day for a moment in time, and I keep coming back to it every single day. Give me, let me, can I guess? It it and it has to do with my mouth. So this is in the bathroom? Mm-hmm. Your toothbrush is the oldest thing you come in contact with? No, everybody? close. I know what it is. What? You still have one of those freaking tongue brushes. I have the original Aura brush, Aura brush tongue brush. What? And it has not lost any of its Gosh. effectiveness. I mean, they sponsored our videos. Seven years ago? I don't oh know how long gosh. it is. And the, it literally says on the packaging you're supposed to replace it every year. Their whole business model is based on the fact that you can't keep no, it for uh, that long. They made them so well that I've looked at this thing a million times and there's absolutely no degradation on any part of it. And I wash it every single time I use it. And you can't it, autoclave it, man. You don't know how clean it is. You wash it. 
You rinse it. No, but it's, you think you. But it's you just, say you wash your feet too. It's just stuff from my own but face. But you just let soap run over your feet, and yeah. that doesn't count as you washing re, your feet. You can't reinfect yourself with a virus or a bacteria that you already have. But what about the stuff floating and landing on it? There's nothing floating and landing on it from your. We've been through this. Well, yeah, but your toothbrush has the same thing. Your toothbrush has got crap all over it. You have to replace your toothbrush every single day and take it out of a sterilized, sealed package if you wanted to avoid those germs. I do. <laughs> But to me, I think the thing that I come in contact with besides my ring and my fillings and my sealants every <laughs> single day. Uh, check, check, check. Is my tongue brush and it's so I, old, it's I, seven years old. I get I, I got rid of mine not more than a year and Six a half years. ago though. So I kept mine for a long time too. And you got rid of it not because it quit working, you got rid of it, why? Just because I you, stopped you, using you it. You were like, it's t you don't use a tongue brush anymore? I don't, I brush with the brush again and I'll, I'll, I'll use. Um, the brush doesn't work as well. I know it does. I mean, Aura Brush is no longer a sponsor of anything that we do. Are they are they still around? I don't even know. All I, but they had a saying that was uh, a saying. It was a slogan. Ninety percent, or it was just a fact. Ninety percent of uh, bad breath is caused by a dirty tongue. And I wholeheartedly still believe, around, still wholeheartedly kicking. believe that Aura Brush, come back to us. You should be brushing your Ear freaking biscuit. tongue. We, we need. We, we need you, you guys to be founding sponsors of our podcast. There's we'll no, call, I don't know what that means, we'll call you that. There's absolutely no excuse for 90% of it. bad breath. Save, no freaking save the, excuse, free, save the, such a pet peeve save of Save the ad copy for when we've got the Clean deal in your place. freaking tongue and then you and rinse with 50% hydrogen peroxide, 50% water, gargle with that crap once a month. They'll never have bad breath. I'm, I, have, I just saved your life. The oldest object for me, I just figured it out, is it's gotta be a t-shirt. Like, mm. I had a- Every day though? Until until we, until three years ago, every, oh, every day, but a lot well, of days. But you had that one that you slept in Yeah, my Math time. Olympiad t-shirt, I got when I was in, I think sixth grade, and I wore it up until three years ago. To sleep in every night? Yeah, I slept in it. Because you wanted to feel like a math champion every night? Yep. To balance, to balance my jockishness. <laughs> oh gosh. I didn't say jock itchness. I just wanna make sure that came. Yeah, I, I knew what you meant. <sighs> oh man. But you don't have that anymore and you don't have your freaking tongue brush. And you, so, you don't have your, something was up. You don't have your freaking retainer. I feel so portrayed. You haven't noticed my teeth getting crooked? I haven't seen your teeth in five years. Yeah, that's why I don't care because you can't see my teeth. Right. My teeth could be any color. <laughs> you can't see them. My mouth <laughs> is covered by my lips. My teeth are covered by my lips and then my mustache does the trick as well. Right, total, it, you don't need to use that total other Total tooth coverage. <laughs> total tooth coverage. Yeah, I'm just gonna quit caring for my All right, guys. oral hygiene altogether because it doesn't matter. Speaking of total tooth coverage, you know that we will totally color, cover your teeth in ear biscuits anytime you Podcast it up with us. You can count on us every week to do this. Every week. Every week. Every we'll week. come back at your ears. We'll come back at your ears. Just be ready. 